right. Welcome back to the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast with your hosts, Chris Harris and John Farquhar. Today, we're going to continue our uh, our conversation of driver qualification files and what kind of documentation and things you need to have in there. So today's episode, we're going to talk about drug and alcohol. Gosh, we just can't be doing uh, going down the road without having drugs and alcohol now, can we? So we're going to talk about drug and alcohol testing, documentation, controls, and some things that you need to know as per your operation. So, hey, Chris, how you doing? Gosh, I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> In the, uh, this ain't water, Johnny. Where Are you going? sure? Yes. Okay. I'll go. That looks like maybe gin or vodka. Or <laughs> <laughs> oh, moonshine. You've been out in the backwoods visiting. <laughs> I Yeah, no. Uh, today, it's just water. But okay, all right. it is, I, we, we do the recordings on a Friday, so I'm not yeah. sure that uh, yeah, it'll yeah. be water tonight. Well, well, I was just wondering, I know you're quite the wine connoisseur. Do they make a clear wine? I don't know. You'll have next time you're out on your wine tours, you'll have to find out if they can make a clear wine. So, God, you wouldn't know it was water or wine. Well, and uh, I mean, I will change the subjects a little bit now because I was at a client uh, yesterday, and the uh, one of the owners th- has a hobby of making what's called fruit wine. And I've oh, never, never okay. heard of this because all wine, okay. of course, is made from fruit, uh, grapes. Yep, yep. But this lady makes wine from apples, from strawberries, um, yes. and apricots, where she gifted oh, me with a couple cool. of bottles. I oh, went, wow. Oh, I can't wait to try this. <laughs> yeah. I've had an apple wine before. I'm not a, I'm not a wine guy by any means, but I've, I've tried some apple, and it was quite different. It's a, it's definitely kind of more towards a fruit juice type approach, the stuff I had. Uh, but still, it just had a, a, a bit of a, well, it's got that fermented punch, eh? So I, I, I much prefer apple cider. Um, but, yeah, it was actually pretty good. So. Um. I'm, I'm interested, and I will be trying it. Maybe this yeah, weekend. You, you have to let me know. Yeah, you have to let me know. I'm curious to see. Apricot, that sounds pretty enticing. Yeah. So, so hey, drugs cool. and alcohol. Yes, drugs and alcohol. Let's, There's all kinds of drugs. There's all kinds of alcohol. And well, you know what? The first thing we want to do is make sure we're not using any of it driving down the road. Well, and as you know, we are very hopeful that we're going to get... Um, the doctor from driver check on the show yes. uh, melissa has uh agreed to appear yes. Yes. because one of the questions i have is has positive drug tests gone up since canada uh, mm. legalized marijuana yes well um, and another question i'm curious to know because we've seen this in other areas we've seen other stats go up has there been any effect because of the pandemic Oh, oh, you mean use? Yeah, like maybe more positive tests gone up because of the pandemic. Uh, maybe Great. drivers who are, you know, like, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not crossing the border anymore, so I'm, I'm using it a little bit more, weekend toking or something like that. But yeah, it'd be kind of interesting. But I, yeah, I like what you're saying with that Canadian rule that went in. How, how's that affecting the Canadian guys? Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, we are talking about drug and alcohol testing. Yes. So, yes. Who? Who, who, we're not owls. Who does have to do, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, could go, I could go with a joke there. I'm not going to even go there today. No, we're going we're gonna to probably be good today. I'll run Why? it by the end of the Why show. would we change? We have <laughs> listeners that don't expect us to be good. I know, no doubt. So, all right. So, they who, sure who's got to do drugging? Don't, they don't look to us for good looks. No, no, that's something. for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, so who does have to do drug and alcohol testing? Well, anybody that operates a commercial motor vehicle that uh, crosses the international border and going into the U.S. Yeah. You know, and and that's another interesting question, and I've asked this in the past. Why doesn't Canada? um, Mm -hmm. You know, because let's be honest, there are some drivers who choose to stay Canada only. Yep. Because yep. they are not drug tested. Correct. Correct. Yes. Now, and with that said, there are some companies, motor carriers, that have implemented a uh, al- drug and alcohol testing program for their Canadian drivers, and they are totally in their right to do that. Uh, but it has to be part of the condition of employment and uh, and whatnot. So, but you can't force 
an existing driver, say, if you start a new program, right. you can't force an existing driver into it. But uh, you can say, hey, new hires, hey, we're, we're, in, we're having this drug and alcohol program. So, And it's good practice. There is no doubt about it. Well, that and with the uh, legalization of the Canadian cannabis, mm -hmm. uh, I would certainly encourage it. And again, this is a question um, that I have for the doctor. Uh, <clears throat> you know, the drug and alcohol for the states is urine-based. Yep. Um, Canada testing, uh, if a policeman pulls you over here in Canada and they suspect you're under the influence of a cannabis product, mm -hmm. they will take you to the emergency room, I'm told, and have yep. a blood draw uh, mm -hmm. by, the, by a nurse. And then the measurement is by THC in your blood, well, which right. is great. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't the states uh, mm -hmm. do that? Because, John, I don't know about you, but... <laughs> I've used when I was in college way back mm -hmm. when, um, yep. you know, and, and I, if I did it on Friday, I certainly don't believe I was under the influence come Monday, but no. It, no. a urine test would say I've got it mm -hmm. in my system. Correct. Anyways, I think Correct. we're going to delete all, all this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting because I think, uh, uh, Doc Melissa there can probably shed some light on that because yeah, I know I, uh, Canada's rules are basically you cannot be under the influence. Yeah. Whereas the U.S. rules is, well, you, it's not about influence. You just can't have it in your system. So yeah. I think we're going to delete all this part just mm. because we'll save those questions for Melissa. Sure. Sure. Yes. There you go. Sounds good. Um, but anyway, so... John, if you are a uh, U.S. bound carrier, you are mm -hmm. saying that you have to test. Yep. Okay. Yep. Well, how, how many tests are there? Well, there's pre-employment testing. So pre at the time I employment John, mm -hmm. but I thought I could request the records from the uh, previous company and not have to spend the near $100 or whatever it mm -hmm. is for a pre-employment mm -hmm. test. Is that not mm -hmm. true? That is true. Yes, you can do oh. that. You can kind of use that as an exception. So that's part of the pre-employment process of testing, right? So, but again, if you're a new driver to this program and say you've never been tested before or you've never worked for a carrier, uh, so therefore you've never done a drug and alcohol test, then, well, guess what? You get to do one now. So. Well, and also, how many of the previous employers are sharing that information? <laughs> they spent a hundred dollars doing it, and uh -huh. you know, yeah. Well, and the hard part is it's you know it's bad enough trying to get reference information from these previous employers, let alone drug and alcohol. So I, I, I'm kind of going to jump jump a little ahead of myself here. That's what the purpose of the clearinghouse is going to help us with. Right. And we'll talk a bit about more of that in a minute. So, but well, uh, I, yeah. So so pre-employment is is your basically your first step. Well, and let's bring the clearinghouse into it because is that not part of the hiring process using the clearinghouse? Yes, yes. You have to check the system to find out if that driver is registered in that system and then it would tell you if, uh, if they've had any positive tests. Right. And I mean, that's the beauty of the system. Once the clearinghouse has been in, in existence, I guess, for three <laughs> years, um, it's my belief we won't have to do the request from the previous employers because all the information right. will actually be housed in the clearinghouse and Correct. it's going to make this one part oh, of hiring it'll, it'll so make, much easier. Yeah. 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 The only, the only thing that'll happen is if you're a driver, a new driver, uh, then right. you wouldn't be in the clearinghouse. So you would register and then you would have to do a pre-employment test. That test would get registered in the clearinghouse. So, and then you'd be good to go. You could go work for anybody without having to do another pre-employment as long as you stay in the system. Yeah. And, uh, that just reminds me, some people might say, well, why do we have this clearinghouse thing, my bobber? And mm -hmm. a true story, unfortunately, as I understand it, there was a coach bus driver uh, applied mm. for a new job. And when he applied, he did the pre-employment and tested positive. Well, back in mm. that day, there was no legal way that uh, potential new employer, mm -hmm. there was no right that they had to report to the existing company that this guy tested positive. And so... Right. It went unreported because that's mm -hmm. the, everybody was following the law, and this yep. driver crashed and killed many on his bus, under mm -hmm. while well, under the influence, yep. and yep. so they realized that there's this 
huge gap in the yeah. drug testing yes. thing, and they filled it quite nicely. I think the uh, clearinghouse yeah. is doing a great job, and we'll speed yeah. things up and just make things. Oh. It, it will, so it will. And and I just want to clarify for people, when we talk about the clearinghouse, this has nothing to do with Ed McMahon and the clearinghouse sweepstakes draw. You're not getting any money out of this. You're going to have to pay. <laughs> well, and it's not very expensive. Um, I'm trying no, to remember what the no. fees are. Uh, 100 bucks a year and, and $10 a test, I want to say. I, I can't remember, to or be honest with you. Um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure to be honest with you. I know there's a, an admin fee, there's a, a yeah. maintenance fee, and stuff like this. But yeah, so yeah, best best way to find out. And I'm sure it probably changes from one consortium to another. I don't know if it's a hard fast because there's obviously the clearinghouse fee, and then there's what your provider would charge. So I would strongly urge you to check with your. Uh, uh, consortium, right. your drug consortium that's helping you to manage that. I'm sure they'd be able to give you that information for sure. Yeah, I forgot. There is, so, you're right, yeah. the uh, clearinghouse fees are, and then the people that access yeah, it on your exactly. behalf, there's another yeah. fee for that. Well, and, and I do know that you have the ability to manage your clearinghouse yourself uh, yeah. as a motor carrier, uh, or you can use your drug consortium. So, and I, I know talking with a number of clients, they've gone, yeah, I, I use my drug consortium. And one of the common ones is driver check. And that's who we're going to get on the show here. We've had them on before, but we're going to get them on again. But uh, driver check will take and take care of all that for you. So it's almost like having somebody that sits at the desk in your office and just that's all they do is take care of that. But probably the fees are a lot cheaper than having a full-time staff member. Well, and you just know it's taken care of correctly if you're using a yep. good consortium. Yes. Well, because so. the fines from USDOT for uh, uh, drug and alcohol <laughs> violations are horrendous. So you want to make sure you're doing things right. Yeah. Well, and we're going to talk about one of the other drug testing things in a minute, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, specifically talking about post-accident. But let's save that to yeah. the end. So yeah. we got pre-employment, oh. and then we got pre random. Random. Yes. Random. 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 So, like you get the Scottish guy in a yeah. random test. Right? Well, you got the right shirt on today. <laughs> you know, that shirt could be a okay, kilt. That's, hard. that's right. That's right. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, so random testing. What? What? Well, tell us. What's random testing about? Well, I mean, it's, random's kind of easy because if you're with your drug consortium, likely every quarter they just send you a list and it is generated by the computer and it is literally random, even though John Farquhar might get pulled every quarter. Oh, yes. yes. And somebody else may not get pulled for years. Yep. It is random. Yep. Um, and just follow along with your drug consortium. But what I mm -hmm. wanted to talk about with random, one of the errors I find way too frequently is <laughs> when the companies get their list, they reach out and say, hey, John, by the way, you're on the random list, so let's get it done next week. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, you're not supposed to do that. No. <laughs> That's that's not legal, John. No, it's not. No. Um, I believe, and this is going from memory, uh, leave a comment if I'm wrong in the uh, show notes there. Uh, leave us a comment. But I believe that once you inform the driver, first of all, they have to be on duty when you inform the driver. They can't be off duty. And then once you do inform the driver, they, only, they must go immediately. Um, mm -hmm. to go for a drug test. And yep. I know we always tried to make sure it happened within two hours of yep. being informed. Yep. Sure. In in my company, where we were doing it, our drivers always tells you how long ago this was. <laughs> they had to phone us to say, hey, uh -huh. I just cleared the border. Uh, yep. So this would be Windsor or Sarnia. Oh, you right. just cleared the border. Oh, guess what? You're on the list. And we yeah. had a uh, testing uh, spot in London. So on their ah, way back to perfect. Mississauga, stop in. they had yep. to stop in uh, at the, um, well, the Husky in London mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. do their little uh, donation. Yep. But that yep. was on duty. They were coming back. And we also knew that they were going to be off for the following 36 hours is yep. how we yep. always tried to do it because sure. Sure. we wanted to see if we could when it's practical, get the drug yep. test results back before yep. we dispatch that driver again. Because yes. <laughs> nothing Correct. worse than having a driver yep. 10 to 20 hours away. Yep. Uh-huh. And, and getting a positive, a positive test. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good luck moving that load now. You're in trouble. Yeah. So, but you're right. Yes. One of the reasons so. I was in, I wasn't a driver, but I was in the drug testing pool mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. with my A because if we had to, Chris yep. could go down there and bring the truck back. Yep. And bring the driver. <laughs> we, we wouldn't leave the driver behind. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But yeah, so you know, I, I know a lot of times uh, when I had my trucking company, we would uh, we would try to coordinate it uh, before they headed out on a trip, if we could, uh, or we would do it just like you're saying, catch them on their way back and go, okay, let's get him set up, and you know, he's going to be at the yard at two o'clock in the afternoon. Cool, he can jump in his car and then he can take and run over and do a test and uh, be there within twenty minutes. So we had a yeah. testing facility within fifteen minutes of our faci- of our yard there. So it kind of made it convenient. But uh, a lot of times you're trying to coordinate it. So if drivers are coming home late at night, uh, the testing facility is closed. So I got to wait till Monday, you know. Yeah. So, and yeah. Yeah. We tried not to test on the way out for the same reason. Our runs oh, were, exactly. were yeah. long enough that uh, <laughs> the driver yeah. could be miles away and testing right. positive. Right. right. And, you know, the problem with that, just for our listeners, can you imagine if your driver tests positive, uh, they are no longer legal to drive mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. United States. Yep, correct. And if yep. they had a crash, yep. Good night, nurse. It yep. uh, wouldn't be pretty. No, it'd be one hundred percent at fault, even if you weren't at fault. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so, so. it would just cool. not be pretty. Even yeah, as you no. say, even if it's not your fault, yep. my yep. God, it would be an ugly court case. Yeah, um, it would. So it would. Yep. So all right, cool. the next one. Yep. Let's get it. This is my favorite one because this is the one that is most, in my opinion, misunderstood. Good. Mm, That must be. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Not what I was thinking. I was going to say reasonable suspicion. Oh, okay. Well, we can. I forgot about reasonable suspicion. Let's tackle that one before we get into post Post accident. accident. Uh, Okay. Reasonable suspicion. (laughs) Yeah. So, so reasonable suspicion, which, you know, has a bit of a tie-in with random because post, a reasonable suspicion can be random. So one of the problems that I find a lot with motor carriers is they don't have staff that have completed training on reasonable suspicion notification. They don't understand what it is because they haven't done the training program. So, well, and... I, I run into a because I work with smaller fleets. I you know when I ask this question, they go, "Oh uh, yeah, w- the boss is uh, trained." Oh good. Yeah, yeah. Is he here twenty four seven? Right. Exactly. Uh, doesn't yep. the boss, he or she, take vacation? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. why do we only have one? And and yes. this is an opinion. All right. So yep. you need a minimum of two. But I believe for the cost. It's just oh. easier to get all of the personnel who have Agreed. direct contact with the drivers. Yep. So, for yep. example, dispatchers. Yep. Why aren't mm-hmm. all the dispatchers trained yeah. in reasonable suspicion? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's what, an hour-long video two, course? Two, two, hour, two, two hours. hours? Okay. One, an hour for uh, alcohol, an hour for drug. All so, right. Yeah. So, a two-hour yeah. video so. training course. Yep. And yeah. I know and there's a online. fee. Yeah. But you do it online. Why Let's get yep. all the dispatchers done, um, exactly. and that would yeah. make it so much easier. Yeah. I've even, with uh, some companies, depending on the size that they are, I've even suggested get some of your maintenance staff involved yeah. because drivers interact with mechanics. You know, I'm coming in. I got a problem with the truck. Can we talk about it? Can I get you to fix it? Well, hey, you're interacting with that driver. Now's a good time to kind of, yeah, look at him. Look at his eyes. Oh, God, he's really, uh, geez, he's just starting his well, trip, and he looks like he's exhausted. What the heck? I, well, <laughs> and I think that's a great idea with the mechanic mm-hmm. because or with the mechanic, maybe the supervisor, because yeah. perhaps a mechanic is under the influence and sure. well, they're working and, 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 on our trucks. Now, yeah. it, it that brings up a whole different issue because the mechanic wouldn't be part of the U.S. drug testing rules. Uh, but oh, you got to... Well, I've been to a couple of companies where the drivers are, the, or the mechanic, uh, two of the mechanics at this one company are actually listed as one of the, as the U.S. drivers because they've had to go down and rescue a truck across the border, yeah. whether it be Buffalo or Detroit. So, so these guys were doing the drug and alcohol testing in the event they had to go down because they had an A license. Everybody that had an A license was tagged. 
So at this particular company. Yeah. Well, so. and I think that's a great practice. I'm just thinking mm-hmm. of the mechanics uh, likely wouldn't be part of the U.S. Drug right. Testing Consortium, right. but there's nothing wrong with recognizing no. the signs exactly. of abuse. And then yeah. you could take appropriate steps, legal appropriate yep. steps. Uh, maybe yep. you have to talk to a lawyer or an HR mm-hmm. specialist. Yep. But at least you would recognize that one of your mechanics has an issue and offer them some help. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. It wouldn't be a bad thing. So no, no, great idea exactly. for the mechanic, exactly. John. Yeah, cool. Perfect. All right. Okay, so then on to the one that you were talking about is so misunderstood, which is? Post-accident drug testing. And yep. the reason I believe it's misunderstood is when I ask okay, well, when do you have to do a drug test uh, Mm -hmm. after an accident? Mm -hmm. Some of my clients go, damn, I drug test after every accident because I don't want that coming back on me. (laughs) And I go, oh, my God. Yeah, Um, you don't have to every time. Well, you don't have to every time. And what happens if on the one that you didn't have the legal authority to test, that driver comes back positive? Ouch! Now, mm. I shouldn't have tested, Yeah. but I now know he's a drug user. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, yeah, what, I, just, I just opened up litigious environment quickly. <sighs> like, what? I, I don't know what, and I can't even give any advice as to what to do in that circumstance. Yeah. Because you're yeah. in a real situation. You can't, Call obviously, you can't send a, <laughs> a, a drug user out on the road. But no. if you shouldn't have known, yeah. how do you... Yeah, do exactly. corrective action. And yeah. if anybody out there has an idea, comments, please. Yeah, um, yeah. But so that's yeah. the first thing that I think so, is greatly so, understood. So do you have any information as to what the parameters are as to when people should be po- uh, testing uh, post-accident? Well, John, what a segue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So wow, here, look at this. This looks like some great information, Chris. Uh, well, this is right from the Federal Motor Carrier. As you, everyone can see at the top of the screen, in case you're listening to this, this is part 382 of the FMCSRs. Uh, yep. So Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations. And specifically, we're in Section 303. So that's yep. 382-303. Cool. And look what it says on the screen, human fatality. So there's a couple of reasons for post-accident drug testing. There's three. And for one of them, there's only one trigger. For two of them, there are two triggers. Triggers, correct. Okay, so um, human fatality. If your driver gets a ticket, you've got to test. Yep, no matter what. No ifs, ands, or buts. Yes, And it just says here, you've got to, if it's a human fatality, ticket or no ticket, you've got to test. Test. John, you want to do bodily injury? Sure, bodily injury. So if there's immediate medical treatment away from the scene, so this far, this in this situation, the um, the occupant or the injured would be carried away by a EMS, emergency medical uh, services. Uh, and if there is a citation that's issued to the commercial motor driver, well, then guess what? We've got a test. We've got to take that driver, send him out for a test. Now, if there is no citation issued, even though we have somebody that's taken away by ambulance or EMS, then no, we do not need to test. If there's no citation issued, no need for a test. Okay, so that's a two-trigger event. Yep. Exactly. There's somebody injured, yep. and did your driver get a citation? Therefore, you got to test. If he did get a citation, you got to test. Right. So that takes two triggers. That one. Yep. Yep. Because if there's no te- no no citation, then no test required. Okay. Disabling damage. Go ahead, Johnny. Do disabling damage. Oh, geez. This is where this is where we've got some damage, and 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 the vehicle is towed. Now, I think this is where a lot of people get confused because, well, my truck wasn't towed. It doesn't matter if your truck was not towed. If the other party was towed. Then and you, your driver received a citation, then you must test. The driver must test for drugs and alcohol. Now, if the driver did not receive a citation, then no need for a test. We're in good shape. No need to worry about it. But so this does not matter 
whose vehicle is towed. Any vehicle that was involved in the incident. So if there were four vehicles and one of those vehicles was towed, then and you received a citation, you're going to have to test. Right. And that's and it get we won't get into it in this um program, but <laughs> There's a definition of what a tow is. And a yep. quick, dirty example would be your truck gets towed because of a flat tire. Mm -hmm. well, believe it or not, that doesn't get classified as a tow. No, no. <laughs> so, exactly. You've got to understand what the FMCSRs mean as yep. what a tow is. It's disabling damage. Right, um, exactly. A flat tire is not considered disabling no, damage. No. So, but if it busted the tire off the front, like the rim and the hub ah. and whatnot, that's disabling. Yes. Right. So, yep. and again, exactly. the, these are things that are good reasons why you want to understand what the FMCSR is. Yep. And again, yep. mainly because if you test when you don't have the legal authority to test, yeah, yeah, and something comes back other than clear, mm -hmm. uh, the quagmire that you are in is. Yep. Yep. Deep. Exactly. Exactly. Hey. Well, one, one easy way to, to, to remember this, like all your yeses are directly tied into a citation. So if your driver well, receives a citation, regardless of what the incident was, you're, you're probably going to have to test. Yes. So the and only exception there is a fatality. Whether you receive a citation or not, you're going to have to test no matter what. Yeah, and, and to be, I don't want to say crude, because this isn't nope. really crude, but to be nope. a little bit rude, yep. you could say hearse, nurse, yep. or toe. Ooh, there you go. Okay, That's so hearse, like nurse, or that. toe, and yep. a hearse, yes, you've got to, but nurse yep. or toe, meaning medical attention received away from the scene would be the nurse, and yep. toe, then you need the second trigger. Yep, Correct. Correct. All right, so if I have this accident in Kentucky, I'm going yep. to test the driver when I get him back to uh, Southern Ontario because it's easier for me, right? Oh, no, you're not. Oh. That's not allowed. No. Why? Stop. <laughs> Don't pass go. <laughs> Do not collect 200. So just below that screen. Yeah, right here. It says uh, the drug testing has to be as soon as yeah, practical. practical. Yep. So... So as soon and as and practical some, is when some, it starts. So there is some particulars right here with alcohol tests that says um, that if uh, if you and uh, some things here that if you do not administer the test within a certain timeline of uh, of receiving a citation uh, or of the incident, then you're going to create some more quagmires right off the bat here. So things that you need to be aware of. So yeah, the two and, hour two yeah. hours is is one limitation. And then for alcohol, it's um, after eight, you must cease attempts. So it says yep. here, eight hours following the accident, the employer shall cease attempts yep. to administer an alcohol test. So we've got as yep. soon as practical, then a two hours. And then if after yep. two hours you didn't get it done, you better make some notes as to why you didn't yep. get it done. Exactly. Uh, because yep. that's Document. the first... Yep, document, document, document. And mm -hmm. most reasonably, um, often, if especially if it's a more serious crash, you're off, your driver may not be released from the scene yet by the officer. Mm -hmm. So exactly. you, you just exactly. want to record the officer's badge number, yep. Uh, yep. say, hey, my driver wasn't released from the scene yet, two hours yep. has expired. Yep, um, exactly. And then eight hours, th that's when you cease. Yep. Now, John, what if my driver yep. goes to the hospital, he's unconscious, she's mm -hmm. unconscious, um, I can just go there and, and take a urine sample from the hospital and do that? Well, they'll probably, a uh, good chance that the hospital will do a toxology, which means they'll probably take some blood because they want to find out what's wrong with you. But uh, if you're unconscious, it kind of leaves everything up in the air, does it not? N not really. Okay. It, it ha You can't. The Can't. driver. Why not? Yeah, Come on, I want to. Driver has to volunteer. Ah, uh, that's a. Good you need the driver people. consent. Yep. Okay, so the driver has to be conscious in order to yep. take their drug and alcohol, um, or to do a drug and alcohol test. Yep. So if your driver is unconscious, it is not good enough 
to uh, take a urine sample, for example, um, and do the testing there. That would be illegal. And again, I don't want you to do anything violation. illegal. Yeah. So well, and, and and this is again all the reason why you need to document. Oh, you know, right. to be able to state, oh, driver was in the hospital, he was injured. There was no way he could volunteer for this by any means. Yeah. Not happening. So and and, and so so well, interesting he, he enough. He has to be uh, unconscious. Right. Because correct, even if correct. he's injured, he could still voluntarily Right, right. So what submit. happens if I am uh coherent and I refuse to volunteer well, to do a test? What does that do for me? Well, that's considered a positive drug test. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. pretty, again, yep. uh, that's pretty damning. All right. The right. last one. So that's yep. for alcohol. We've got yep. uh, as soon as practical, then yep. the two hour limitation, the eight yep. hour limitation, limitation where we, we cease now to do the alcohol. How about yep. drugs? Well, we've got a little bit bigger window here with drugs. That's what's kind of interesting here. We have, uh, we've got up to 32 hours. Right. So, but again, I think. I, I shouldn't say I think, I know that if you don't follow the rules, and the rules would be as soon as practicable, Yes. right? So you don't wait to go, oh, well, I can have the driver home in 15 hours. No, no, we need to do it now because if he's under the influence of drugs at that time, we park his butt. I say yeah. his, but his or her. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I've had uh, accidents in Buffalo, and my clients have said, "I'm just going to bring the driver home to uh, to St. Catharines to do the." No, no. there's yeah. lots of testing consortiums or testing exactly. places in Buffalo. Yes. So, which brings up the next question: John, How do I find out? Like, gosh, my driver is in Texas and has mm-hmm. an accident. How yep. do I find a drug testing spot to send my driver? Well, first place I go to is my drug consortium, the people right. that help me with my drug program. They have access to all the places North American wide. So this is where it makes life a little bit easier. Work with your drug consortium. Don't try to do this yourself. Yeah, and your drug consortium will likely be asking you many of these questions. Mm-hmm. Um, was somebody injured? Was there any of the vehicles towed? Did Correct. your driver get a ticket? They should be hopefully coaching you. Yep. Uh, yep. But... You should know the rules as well. Um, yep. All right. What else exactly. do we need to discuss here for drug and alcohol, post-accident, well, random? Well, one suspicion? of the things is we've, uh, as part of the hiring process, we've got lots of great documentation that needs to be completed. So, um, and that needs to be part of the drug and alcohol file. But it shouldn't be in the driver qualification file. Oh, why not, Johnny? Tell me more. Well, yeah, well, this is private information, and, and it's not to be shared with everybody in the company. You know, last thing we need to be doing is letting people know, oh, geez, you know, Christopher here, he went and had a positive drug test this week. Y'all hear about that? He was t- jacked up on cocaine. You know, and he was, he was, what, no, what's that? He was, he was jacked up like a fire monkey on Mountain Dew. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you're not to be sharing this type of information with those no. damn insurance safety no, people. Exactly. Well, interesting enough, it's, it's, it's funny you say that because I was just in an evaluation this past week and there was drug and alcohol information and it was previous reference history information. You know, as part of the pre-employment, the driver had never been before, and they were requesting previous employer information. And all that information was in this file. And I'm like, no. And, and they were like, oh, but it's it's in a locked cabinet. I go, but who has access to the cabinet? Oh, all the operational people and all the safety people. I said, we have a problem. We can't do this. It has to be controlled by one or two people in the company with a, a designated employer representative, DER. Um, and it should be locked up on its own and kept separate. And, and the last thing I need to do is see this stuff. That's not part of my job. Well, so lock it up. That, and that kind of brings in, I think that was a good segue mm-hmm. to PSP, pre-employment yes. screening report, because yep. the PSP report is to be used for hiring purposes only and Correct. viewed only by those people making the hiring decision. So very similar to the drug where it's not to be accessible to everybody. The Mm -hmm. PSP Mm -hmm. reports Mm -hmm. are not to be accessible to everybody. So 
right. perhaps, and I usually, I regularly see PSP reports in the driver file, yes, which yes. I don't object to uh, yeah. myself. I don't know how yep. you feel. I'm not bad with it. It's the drug and alcohol that's probably the biggest concern. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, what I was going to say about the um, PSP reports, the personnel files shouldn't be, in my opinion, mm-hmm. accessible to everybody in the corporation no, anyways. No. Uh, agreed. So agreed. Yeah. They also well, should be in a locked cabinet and with controlled yep. access. Yep. Yeah. Well, and, and this is where good, and I, you know, and there's many people that do this. And I, when I say people, uh, uh, motor carriers and whatnot, they'll divvy up their, their file. So it's, you'll have your qualification file, you'll have your personnel file, and then you'll kind of have a training file, you know, because in the qualification file, I find all kinds of stuff. And it's like, but this has got nothing to do with the compliance aspect of this. Yeah. You know, like, okay, yes, I need a copy of his driver's license, but I don't need his passport. I don't need his SIN number. I don't need his, you know, permanent residency card, all these things and whatnot. That can go in another file. Yes, you need it as a company to validate him, but that needs to be kept under lock and key. You have privacy regulations you have to comply with. So they need to be controlled elsewhere. Yeah. And I mean, I also. Uh, I love color. So mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. when I was doing this, I used to have four different colored folders. So, ah, um, yes. you know, the red, for example, was either dangerous goods or yep. most often it was the you've been a bad person folder, ah, uh, yes. which I may not want to share with DOT or right. MTO when they exactly. came in. So yeah. those warning really letters. To, they're not really wanting to see it anyway. No. So I'd have all the warning letters there. Uh, the yep. green file, I loved it to be training mm-hmm. because it's mm-hmm. green's positive and training sure. and all my documentation yep. for training, Great and idea. new hire orientation and all that kind of yep. thing was yep. that. Uh, and then I had a different color for drug and I had a different color yep. for the DQ file. And yep. some companies, as you're suggesting, would have even a fifth file and yep. I'd call it HR or human resource, yep. like all the other things sure. that yeah. don't. Because I call it a DQ file, meaning driver qualification. We're yep. qualifying the driver to operate yes. our truck. Correct. So yep. that's all that should be in there. Abstracts and, and yep. references are, are important and a road yeah. test is important. Meet, st- documents that are required for the uh, to meet the regulatory compliance aspect of right. qualifying, qualifying a driver. Yeah. yeah so, so Well, yeah, because I was going to say, um, the last thing you need... Have in that file is the is the driver's uh, void check to get his payroll direct right. deposited. You know, no, nah, oh boy, nobody needs to see that. Yeah, so all those things could go into a separate file, I guess. Yeah. Yep, exactly. All right, separate did, these out. Did we beat the hell out of uh, drug and alcohol testing? I I think we've done a pretty good job here. Yeah, I, I'm thinking. You know, other than you know what. Um, if if uh, if you gotta feed your guys drugs and alcohol, make sure it's the stuff they won't get caught with. And yeah, I don't know that there's no, anything. No, I like think that. we'll just so just just park them all and uh, serve them pina coladas on Saturday with the barbecue that you're gonna host. You know, and and treat your guys real good, real nice. You know, maybe even the alcohol free beer. That's not a bad idea. You know, so yeah. and but, if uh, anybody oh. here, ooh 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 what ooh. Well, I just thought of one that's kind of interesting. It, it's 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 tied in with the alcohol, but not the drug aspect of it. And, and unfortunately, we see this. I don't want to say too frequently, but we do see it enough where a driver gets charged with possession oh of alcohol God. because they stopped at the bloody duty free and picked up a two four to bring home for the weekend. Guys, people, safety people. It is illegal to transport alcohol in a commercial motor vehicle unless it is manifested in the back of the trailer. So you can't carry it in a cab. The other thing that I will say about that, and this gets subtly endorsed by management because when dispatchers or management at Christmas time accept mm-hmm. a bottle, a gift mm-hmm. from a driver, and they yep. know darn well it came from the duty free store. Yep. Yep. Aren't yep. they condoning it? They are very much so. And yes. I'll yep. tell you, as an insurance guy, and we are both past insurance people, yep. I used yep. to hate seeing that because it yep. says in possession of yep. or I forget the exact words, in possession of yes. and or use. Yes. Well, yes, you don't know whether yeah. they were under the influence or just exactly. in possession. 
Exactly. Uh, so it, it appeared terrible, yeah. and if you ever had to go to court, it would be just oh, awful. Yeah. So. Well, and it's got the same weighting, whether it's possession or use, yeah. right? So it, it doesn't matter. And the sad part is it's it's not worth getting that on your uh, driving abstract or your driving record, wh whether you're in Canada or the U.S. It's illegal. <laughs> so. so, I mean, if you do accept a, a gift from a driver, you may question, where did this come from? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Could it come Better from see the, LCBO? the LCBO bag. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Johnny. You know, yeah, give them a gift card for the LCBO. Way better. Way better. Yeah. So. All anyway. right. And with cool. that, if anybody would like our driver file checklist, there is yes. a link down below for that. Um, yep. You're will. Uh, I was going to say willing to help yourself. Go help yeah. yourself to the driver <laughs> file checklist. You're Thank welcome you. to help yourself. Yes. Go, go Something like it. that. Got, got so, to get yeah. rid of these speech impediments, I tell you. I know. Well, you know, maybe a little alcohol will fix that up for you. Yeah, okay. And well, a cigar. I, I, a cigar, yes. Okay. That would work. Um, yes. All right. With that, I think <laughs> that's a wrap for drug, alcohol, <laughs> and we hit PSP as well in the clearinghouse. We did. Right? Perfect. Join us again next week when John Farquhar and Chris Harris bring you the Trucking Risk and Insurance Podcast. Thanks for joining us. Take care, y'all. <laughs>